Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at some of the basic properties of algebra. In algebra, a variable is a letter or a symbol that we can use to represent an unknown real number. So a lot of times you'll see x or y being used as a variable. Uh, we can use letters that actually mean something in the context of a problem. So you might see t used if we're talking about time or temperature. You might see d used if we're using distance. When you get to trig, there's even more types of symbols that we'll use. Uh, typically we'll use Greek letters, so we might see alpha or beta or theta. So there's a bunch of different symbols that we can use to represent these unknown values. Now a constant is a letter or symbol that's used to represent a specific number. So something like negative 4 or 1 or the square root of 2 or even pi. All of those symbols represent a very, very specific number that we're dealing with. So in algebra, what you'll see is combining variables with constants using some sort of operation to create an algebraic expression. So something like x plus 3 is an algebraic expression. t minus 7 is an algebraic expression. Theta minus pi is an algebraic expression because we're using a symbol, a variable, combined with a constant number using some sort of operation. Now we're going to start taking a look at some of the basic properties of algebra and we're going to start with the commutative property. And the commutative property will hold true for both addition and multiplication. What the commutative property says is that we can do addition or multiplication in any order and get the same result. So for addition, we could take u plus v and we'll get the exact same answer if we were to do v plus u. So for example, taking 3 plus 4 versus taking 4 plus 3, the order doesn't matter. We're still going to get 7 either way. The same thing will hold true for multiplication. We could take u times v and get the same answer as v times u. So 3 times 4 is 12, but also 4 times 3 is 12. The next property that we're going to look at is the associative property. And again, this will hold true for both addition and multiplication. The associative property lets us regroup things. So if we've got three real numbers that we're adding together, so say we're doing u plus v plus w, now the order of operations would tell us to do the stuff that's inside of the parentheses first, but the associative property lets us regroup things. So we could take u plus v plus w, so adding the v and the w together first this time, we're still going to get the exact same answer. And again, same thing holds true for multiplication. If we were taking u times v and then multiplying that by w, that'll end up with the same result as if we were to do u times v times w. So we can regroup those values with our parentheses. The next property is called the identity property. And again, there's an addition property and a multiplication property. When we're talking about addition, the additive identity is a number that we can add without changing a value, which makes zero the additive identity, because if we were to take u plus zero, if we were to take u and add nothing to it, we're still going to get u as the answer. So again, zero is called the additive identity. Similarly with multiplication, there's a multiplicative identity, and it's one taking u times 1 will result in u. So 1 is the multiplicative identity. Our fourth property is the inverse property. For addition, an inverse is something that when we add it to another value, we're going to end up getting that additive identity 0 as the answer. So what we need to do here is if we take u and add on the opposite of u, that'll give us 0 as the answer. So something like 3 plus negative 3 gives us 0. For multiplication, if we're taking u times a value, we're trying to get that multiplicative identity, which is 1, as the answer. So in order to get that, we're going to need to take u and multiply it by 1 over u. 
Now the only thing we have to be careful of here, because u is on the bottom of that fraction, we need to make sure that u is not zero, because you can never have zero on the bottom of a fraction. Our final property is the distributive property. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have some u value times a few things being added together. So I'm going to take v plus w. And what the distributive property lets us do is distribute this multiplication to each value inside of our parentheses. So we have to take the u times the v, and we have to take the u times the w. Now we're going to keep the same operation between those. So since we were adding here, we're going to keep adding. But if we were subtracting, then we would want to keep a subtraction symbol in there. On the left-hand side, where that u value is on the outside of the parentheses, that's called the factored form. But on the right-hand side, once we distribute that u through, that's called the expanded form. So in this example, we're going to look at using the distributive property a couple different ways. In part a, we're going to write out the expanded form of x times a plus 2. So using the distributive property, we need to take this x and multiply it by the a. So we're going to get x times a, and then we have to take the x and multiply it by the 2. Now typically when we do this, we write the number first, so I'm going to call it 2x. And then we want to keep the same operation between them. Here we're adding, so we keep the addition symbol. So we get x times a plus 2 times x. Now when we're writing out the factored form, we're going to work this backwards. So what I want to look for is something that both of these terms have in common, specifically the y value. So we're going to take that out of our two terms, and then we're going to take what's left over and put it in a set of parentheses. So if we take the y out of the first term, we get the 3 left over, minus, if we take the y out of the second term, we'll have the b left over. So we get y times 3 minus b. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.